Well, today we're going to do the handover on the Burst and Liseo TD744 Harmony line. Uh, we're going to start on the outside, then we're going to move on to the inside. So, filling up. Filling up can be done from here, and it's diesel which is just into, the, uh, into there. When we open up the door, you can see that you've got your door, uh, your tyre pressures on the door sill, which are just there. And also your bonnet release catch, which is just there. If I pull that, that'll release the bonnet, just on your passenger side. Whilst I'm here, you've got Remis cab lines which are fitted this, to this model. You've also got them in the front. To operate this, simply pinch and pull the blind out until it connects to this other side, which are just on magnets. Um, in regards to this, I find that it's a lot easier if you lead from the bottom and link it up to the side like that. Then simply clip back, back in once you're, uh, once you're done. Moving around to the bonnet. Your bonnet release catch is just in line with your Burster logo, which is just underneath there. Underneath the bonnet, the main things that you're going to need to know is if you're ever going to jump, jump start the vehicle. If that is the case, you've got your negative, which is which goes onto this point here, and you then have underneath here your positive. You've got a cap on here which has a positive symbol, which is just on the top of the cap there, um, which indicates that that's the positive. And as I say, your negative is just onto there. They're the main things, as I say, that you need to know about. But whilst we're here, just to point out a couple of things, you've got your engine oil, which is just down here with your dipstick. You've then got your um, brake disc fluid, your engine coolant, your power steering fluid, and then your washer fluid, which is in there. That's everything underneath the bonnet. On the passenger side of the vehicle, you can see that you've got your convenience locker, which is in here, your gas locker, and also your garage which is just there. To begin with we're going to start off with your convenience locker. In your convenience locker it contains your water tank which is your fresh water tank here and your boiler drain down point along with your hookup cable here. So when using the fresh water simply unscrew this. Once that's unscrewed remove the plastic container here slide that on then you can put your hose pipe in the reason it does that is any water that comes out will just flick out and not go into onto the inside of the van as it indicates there you've got 120 litres of fresh water um, and if you are wanting to clean the, uh, the water tank you can remove this and clean the inside at the top you've got where your drain down point is for your fresh water point uh, uh, fresh water tank all you've got to do with that is turn and you've got a couple settings with this you can see that the water will begin to come out there. Now on your burst in a fresh water tank, you've got two settings as I say. You've got one setting that when you turn it and you get to a lug, when you're at that lug, the whole water system will drain down to 20 litres. In essence, this is a quick drain down valve. Uh, and the reason it's there is if you're ever moving on site uh, and you want to take water, they recommend that you travel with a uh, maximum of 20 litres. Uh, due to the weight uh, distribution of the of the um, of the water, if you're wanting to drain down the whole um, system, uh, the whole 120 liters, all you've got to do is keep turning past that lug until you can no longer turn the the valve, and that'll empty the whole system. Next, you've got your hookup cable, which is just here, and then below that, your frost protection valve, and also your boiler drain down point. Your frost protection dra valve drains everything uh, in the, the, the boiler point um, and your boiler point, everything beyond that point um, in regards to your um, your piping and things like that. Now, your frost protection valve is a, is, a, is a fail safe. So at the moment, it's closed. To open this, all you've got to do, turn the diamond until the black nib comes up and the, the blue little tab at the bottom pops out. You can see that that then empties the boiler. To close this, all you've got to do, rotate the diamond so the black nib pops in, and then simply push that blue tab in so it disappears. And as I say, that'll close the system. Now what often happens is when it reaches a certain temperature, and um, that'll trip, which is it's designed for, and that'll often happen when you're uh, storing the vehicle because you're not using it. Um, so once that trips, and you come to use the vehicle again, what you'll need to do is close the system, so close it up like that, 
as I say. And what you'll do is you'll go to push this blue tab in. Now, as I say, if you've not used it in a while and it's a, the colder months in particular, um, this blue little button down here won't press in. If that's the case, what you need to do is you need to go in the vehicle, you need to uh, operate your heating system, turn it on, um, and heat this area. Hence why this pipe is here. This pipe will heat this area up because this is temperature sensitive. Once you've uh, once you've heated this area, you'll then allow uh, it'll then allow you to push that tab just back in into place and allow you to close it. As I say, that often happens when it's uh, reach, when it's quite cold climate uh, and you've not used the vehicle in a while. With your drain down points, I always say you need to drain down um, once you've finished using the vehicle because you don't want any frozen water in your system. Finally, you've got from your boiler point to uh, your taps which is just here at the moment it's closed flick it up and that opens the system and you can see the water coming out which is just at the bottom there just simple like that whilst we're on the topic of drain down points your final drain down point is your waste water which is located here and you can see that by the sticker there underneath this area you'll be able to see the pipe which is just there and also you'll notice there's almost like a rod. What this rod is, you'll get this little uh, black lever which comes with the vehicle. Slot that on, onto the rod, and turn down. Once you have that rod on, as I say, simply turn down, and that'll begin to empty the whole water system. To close, slot the rod back on, push up, and that'll stop the water from coming out. What we say with all your drain down points is you can leave them open when you're traveling, because the vibration of the road will empty all your tanks. It's just water at the end of the day, so it's not gonna be, uh, it's not gonna cause any harm to the, uh, to the road or anything like that. It doesn't contain harmful chemicals. Before I move on from the convenience locker, just to mention, your hookup cable does go on there, your lead then, flows through this area here just with this cut and you can see you got a little notch in there for where the lead needs to escape next your trim event this is for your boiler system this in essence is the vehicle's chimney um, so this does get very hot so don't hang anything on there um, and as I say that's the vehicle's chimney so so leave that alone uh, you don't need to do anything with that Next along you've got your gas bottles. In your gas locker you can store two 6kg bottles connected to a pigtail which is just on your gas light regulator there. Uh, in regards to this, uh, always turn your, your bottles off at the, um, sorry, your gas off at the bottle when you're driving just for safety. Next along you've got your fridge vents which are just here. On up one there, you can also buy covers for them um, during the winter. What I say is uh, just be sensible with this. So if you are on site and it's a boiling hot day, you've got the sun um, hitting the side of the van, turn the vehicle around and help it because this is where the fridge sources all of its um, air from. Finally, you've got your garage there. You've got two access points into the garage. You've got this side and also the other side. Whilst we're along the back, you can see you've got your reversing camera, which is just up at the top. And then as I say, your second garage door along with all your uh, book packs and your carpets moving around you'll also notice up at the top is your awning in regards to the awning use you only want to use your awning when you're um, when the when the day is preferably um, bright and sunny and it's not raining uh, any si sign of a breeze uh, as you can see it's quite windy today uh, you wouldn't use it because as you can imagine it's a massive sail so it could, unfortunately, um, you know, it could actually rip off. So just be careful with that. Um, but just be sensible. Um, and how that works is you've got a connector point which connects onto here, the awning pole. Simply wind that out. That'll wind about three to four meters. And then you drop your, your legs down and let it take the weight of the awning and simply walk it out. Down here, you can see you've got your final hatch. In this hatch is your cassette toilet. In here, as I say, is your cassette toilet, which is just there. To remove this, simply 
pull up and pull out. When removing this, you need to always make sure that the blade on the toilet is closed because if it isn't, what will happen is you'll pull it out um, and it'll consequently snap the arm of the, to of the toilet cassette, which can be a nightmare. So if it feels like it's being forced, you're probably doing something wrong, um, just re-evaluate -evalu and, uh, and always check that you've, uh, that you've closed that blade. Uh, emptying this, you've got a, a cap on the top there, which pulls out, say, uh, which swings out like that. Take the cap off and then you can empty. You've got a vacuum button on the back there, which will release all the airflow um, and allow you to, to release all the, all the waste in one steady flow. That's your cassette toilet. And that concludes the outside of the vehicle. Moving on to the inside, whilst I'm here, you can see you have these panels throughout the vehicle. You've got one here uh, and one in the back there. That's for underfloor storage. You can store things like shoes like that and stuff like that. Next, moving into the vehicle, you've got your step button, which is just here, and then your porch lights. And these operate the lights on the inside of the vehicle, and also your awning lights and your door lights. To activate these, you've got your control panel, which is just here. On your control panel, you've got your main button, which is here, which is your um, master switch. Turn that on, and that'll activate everything. You've then got your leisure battery level, if I press that you can see we're at 100% and then you've got your vehicle battery level well now what will happen is when you're driving your leisure battery will get charged and vice versa moving across you can see you've got your fresh water tank if I press that I've not got much in but it'll show your level there and then at the bottom you've got your waste water press that again not much in but it'll show you there Finally, on this control panel, you've got your uh, pump, which is just here. Click that, that'll activate the pump. Only activate the pump once you've got water in the system, because um, if you don't, obviously, you will burn out the pump, uh, which you don't want. When you're doing that and you're on site, uh, in operation, fill up the water tank, then go to all of your taps, turn them to hot, and turn them on. What that's going to do, um, and then turn your pump on, what that's going to do is it's going to pull water through your system, prime in the system, and also prime in the boiler. It'll then come out of here, it'll spurt and splutter. Once it's, uh, uh, once it's running steadily, um, you know that you've, uh, that you've primed your system and you're good to go. Once you've done that, flick it over to cool, do the exact same. And you can do this for your taps, all your taps, and also your shower unit as well. Um, once you've done that, leave your pump on, all your taps are on isolation valves, and it'll only activate the pump uh, when you need the water. And that's your control panel. Next you have your Truma panel. This is for your heater, so it includes your space heater and also your water heater. Everything below the line is what we want to select. We can, uh, we can hover over each option by simply rotating this wheel. To begin with, You've got your vehicle's temperature. There we are, you've got your vehicle's temperature. Let's try that again, shall we? There we are. <laughs> vehicle's temperature. So, you can see, by rotating the dial, you can select what temperature you want, and then just press in with the button to activate it. At the moment, I've not got anything fuel in the vehicle, so I won't do that. Next along, you've got your uh, water temperature. You've got eco, hot, or boost. Now, your eco is approximately 40 degrees. Now, your hot is about 70 degrees. And your boost, all that's going to do is it's going to stop heating the vehicle and concentrate on heating the water system. Your eco, as I say, is 40 degrees. You're going to be using that when you're having a shower. And your hot is 70 degrees. You're going to be using that when you're, um, when you're washing the pots and pans and things like that. Just go off that. Next, you've got your fuel. If I click that, you've got the option of gas. Mix one, which, which is a mixture of one kilowatt electric and gas. Mix two, which, which is a mixture of gas and two kilowatt electric. And then EL1 and EL2. EL1 is one kilowatt electric and EL2 is two kilowatt electric. Majority of the time, if you're on site, you'll be using your, uh, your EL2 uh, for two kilowatt electric. Finally, underneath this line, you can see you've got your um, your fan speed. With your fan speed, you've got a couple of options. You've got the option of eco, high, or boost, just like you have with your water temperature. What that'll do is it'll stop. It'll, it'll just work vice versa. So it'll stop heating the, um, the the vehicle 
uh, sorry, it'll stop he heating the vehicle's water temp and uh, focus more on heating the vehicle itself. Scrolling along, you've then got your timer, so you can set a timer. You've got your clock. And then you've also got your settings. In your settings, the main thing that you need to know is your reset button. Your reset button is there for if you ever get an error code. The reason you'll get an error code is if you've selected a, get a fuel, uh, in essence, that, that you've not got. So if I was to turn the temperature on now um, and try and heat the van and, and select gas, for example, I've not got any gas to the vehicle. So I'd get a flashing error code. What you need to do from there is go into your reset panel, reset it, and that'll reset the whole system for you. That's everything with the heater system. Next, moving on to your drop-down bed. Your drop-down bed, you've got two in here. You've got one up at the front and one at the back. To operate these, you have your control panel here. You need your key, put it in, turn it, and then you can operate it on the buttons, which I'll show you in a minute. To lower this bed to its full position, you need to remove this cushion, make sure that the area is clear, and then what I personally do is I always fold in the lights to ensure they don't get in the way, just like so. Whilst I'm talking about these lights, just really quickly, you can actually remove these off the tracking. There's a live track which is just underneath, and you can move them around the vehicle. All you do, uh, all you do with that is you put it back on, turn it, and that'll connect it. Once your keys are in, as I say, simply drop the bed. That'll then stop automatically, and you know that you've uh, that you've stopped. You can then leave all your bedding on this. What I personally say is just keep all your um, your pillows and things in the top there, um, just over the over the cab. But everything else can stay on top. Whilst we're on the topic of the drop down beds, you've also got your uh, you can see netting, which is just there, and that'll connect onto this area here, like so. Just so, just stop you from falling out. Finally, with the lounge just underneath this seat, before we move on. You've got your space for your two leisure batteries. At the moment, you've just got the one in, which is just here. And you can see down here, we've got your solar panel regulator. Your solar panel regulator just does its thing. Just leave it alone. Uh, you don't need to do anything. That is always um, feeding a constant charge to that, that leisure battery. So you can leave that as it is. Next, moving on to your kitchen area. You've got your hob, which is up at the top there. Just there. With an igniter switch. That's the only difference. Pull the igniter switch and feed the gas in just through there. You then got your oven and grill, which is just down there, and then storage, which is dotted about. You can see that you've also got your isolation valves, which are just in here. Now with that, you don't have to touch them, just leave them as they are. Um, only touch them when a technician or myself uh, ever advises you to. Underneath the kitchen area, you can see that you've got your RCD breaker, which is just here. In here, this is where you go to if the vehicle ever trips. Um, so that's your RCD breaker. Uh, from there, you can then decide which fuse it is. Uh, for your fuses, they're located underneath your passenger seat. Next, you have your fridge system. Your fridge is a Dometic three-way fridge. What that includes, uh, when I say three-way, is there's three ways to power it. So you've got your mains, which is there. So you've got your mains which is here, your gas, and then your 12 volt. You'll then notice this A. This A is uh, stands for automatic, and what I'll do is I'll set it on there for you. So it'll automatically choose whichever fuel you've got. So if I'm on site and I'm hooked up, it'll automatically select uh, mains for you. Um, to turn this on, all you've got to do, turn it on, and then it'll select the fuel. At the moment, I've not got any gas. I click A, and up the side from there. You'll also notice that you've got your, uh, your temperature here, which is just there. You can alter that by pressing this button, just like that. Just one thing to mention as well, just with this panel, uh, once that is uh, is completed and uh, and done, if you ever select for whatever reason the wrong uh, fuel, 
this will flash and go off. The reason being is um, because obviously you've not got the fuel to the van. You can see on here you've got your reset. All you've got to do is hold that button there. Opposite this area is your bathroom area. You can see that you've got your uh, blade on your toilet, which is just there. If I pull towards me, that'll open the cassette. If I close, that'll close the cassette. When you're using the cassette, you need to open it, let all the waste drop into the cassette, and then flush the system using the blue button, which is on the top there, and then close it. Your flush, as I say, is that blue button there, um, and that'll only work when your pump is on. And on that panel as well, just to bear in mind, if um, if the if the cassette ever does get full, you'll get a red light on there just to warn you that it's uh, that it's full, so you need to empty it. Finally, moving on to the back, you've got this dividing door to divide the space, uh, and the main area obviously is the lounge and the drop-down bed, which is just here. To drop this area, as I say, just like the the first one, fold all the lights up, remove these cushions, and then you can drop the bed, which I'll show you how to do now. Once you've cleared the area and removed the cushions and folded up the lights, you're good to go. As again, as I said again, turn the uh, the button and that'll activate, activate the switch. You can then lower the bed. Just like the uh, the last one, what this will do um, is it'll stop automatically when it's at its set height. Underneath here as well, just to help you up, you've got a step which contains storage as well which will just help you up onto there. Again, coming back to your bed, you can leave all your bedding on here just with your pillows, stick them at the front. Coming through to the back, whilst we're here, I'll show you your windows. With your windows on each of them, you've got your blackout blinds, which are just there, which just slide up. And you've also got your fly screens, which are just there, which will clip onto there. To open these, all you've got to do, undo the latches like so, And then push out. That'll connect into place. When we're when when closing this, push all the way up, and that'll allow you to close the window. Before closing, I'll show you. You can actually have it on lap on a latch system, which is just there on venting, which will allow for a little bit of airflow to come through. Obviously, when doing this, you need to make sure that the window is closed when travelling off. Moving on, in your wardrobe area, you've got this box here, that is for your jack system. You've also, in the garage, got an inflation kit, because obviously the vehicle doesn't come with a spare wheel due to weight, um, so that's where that is located. Finally, you have your aerial, which is located just in the kitchen area, just above. Um, with this, unscrew the, uh, this plastic cap, push up, and then screw. Uh, that'll then... Uh, slot it into place. You then have this little arm on the bottom which you can manoeuvre and manipulate to decide on the, uh, which will tilt the head of the um, the aerial depending on uh, your range and things like that. Underneath this is how you power the aerial on and off. Your switch is just up here as you can see green light and then you've also got here your uh, dial for the range which you can play around with. That concludes your handover on the Burstnell Azale 744 Harmony Line. Hope you enjoyed.